Hey everybody, it's Bobby Medina here with my very dear friend and cohort, fellow host, Paul Barron. And uh, today we're bringing you guys a an exciting uh, product launch here, or not necessarily a launch, but a whole product line uh, put out by a great trumpeter, friend of ours uh, named Frank Huber, and he's the owner of Huber Music. And he's uh, both a commercial as well as a classical trumpet player. And uh, we also have with him uh, John Eric Kelso, who's another friend of ours as well, who you've uh, heard play on the last uh, interview. View. And uh, John is like uh, basically a walking history book of uh, trumpets, styles, and uh, of mute uh, design and studies and all that. So we're really glad to have you guys here. So thanks for taking time out of your schedule. And I will let Paul uh, throw out the first question. All right. Hey, welcome, guys. Uh, Frank, um, it's like Christmas here. <laughs> You've got such an amazing line of mutes and they all sound really great. Um, so today we just want to like kind of go through and, and share with everybody uh, all, all your amazing mutes. So can we start with the, uh, the mega mute because it's something that I've never played before um, and I'm not really sure what to do with it or <laughs> or in what style to use it but it sounds so cool uh, I just want to go back on all these recording sessions I've done in the past where I'm going oh it's just not the right mute but I don't have the right I, I don't have it with me and and here you've covered all the colors you could possibly imagine so let's start with this and uh, talk a little bit about that right yeah so so the mega mute was I think kind of the third or fourth mute I, I started developing uh, I started with the straight, the Robinson style cup and solo tone. And I've always seen the mega mutes floating around. I've never owned one, unfortunately. And they're typically, you know, most of the guys I've seen that, that buy them have been uh, trad jazz guys. I haven't seen them writing, written in any shows. I'm sure you've never seen them in any shows or anything. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty much like that trad jazz scene. It's an interesting sound. It's, it's almost like a straight mute inside of a megaphone, but this, there's a lot of spacing inside that has to be adjusted. So. John fortunately has an original Shastock Mega Mute, um, and yeah, as you can see, it's like I said, it's it's definitely a unique sounding mute. I don't think there's much written call for it, but there are uh, a lot of opportunities I think in in the recording world, and that's also kind of a goal that I'm that I have with the lineup now is just kind of having as many possible colors uh, and options as you know as you need, um, and the more you I think that's. These, something super cool about what you're offering because you're giving almost kind of unlimited uh colors sound samples that we can we can play with you know hey john how does that what year was the original one there that shastock made do you have an idea um i'm not really sure but i would guess the 20s uh-huh uh, but my the only knowledge i have of, of recordings or or samples where this used was in like jazz in the 20s and into the 30s a little bit but like mm -hmm. a bunch of early ellington things had had the had guys using this uh it's you know not the wah wah stuff but some of the like kind of pretty melody solos that mm -hmm. uh, freddie jenkins might have played in, in the ellington band or or uh i think of the other name right now but uh you know you know lunsford or any of those yeah, it's not, I, I bet I bet some of the early ones might have they might have used it as well. But, uh, so I'm I'm assuming you guys have been able to um, maybe maybe possibly improve improve on this from the old one to maybe correcting maybe pitch issues and evenness of playing and all that. Yes, on, on some of the old ones, I know the lower register uh, wasn't always locking in that great, and uh, at least from what I heard from John and. Uh, Josh Rezepka is also, he has one that he was nice enough to AB for me and, and give me some comparison notes on. And he was saying the same thing. The low register was a little bit squirrelier on the old ones. Uh, I, th I think the general consensus too is the new ones project a little bit more uh, than the old ones, but that's, I think yeah, the sound profile is pretty, pretty much the same though. I think he improved it, you know, this one. The low register doesn't, isn't happening. This is the old one. There's no, no low register at all. And uh, here's Frank's uh, version. 
Yeah, yeah I definitely kind of... recognize that sound. And, oh. and uh, Frank, you were saying you, you probably wouldn't see it in a show. I've, I've seen, you know, p parts that have had Mega Mute on it, and uh, I didn't know what it was. So, you know, I'd, I'd stick in a, a cup mute or a straight mute or, a, you know, like, hey, guys, what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> so you kind of just throw in anything. So now I know. Yeah. Now I'm... Yeah. Um, uh, I'm the I'm the same. I mean, I've never actually. I'm like like Frank here. I've never seen a call for it, but I I know that sound. You know, it's almost like when you yeah. hear, like when I was a kid, I was like way into like like little rascals and stuff like that. You know, and you could hear a lot of those sounds. And of course, back then the trumpets were different bore sizes and all that. So there was a certain just kind of a sound of that era. Well, let's let's talk about another one uh, of your mutes that we kind of want to spot spotlight here and this is uh, your your straight mute which I think is really really cool why don't you tell us a little bit about it because uh, I think everybody would love to hear about it because actually when you think about this you actually get like three mutes in one so give us a little bit of the background on this yeah, so, so the straight mute started out it's a it's like a mix of a Robinson and Shastock straight the bottom of it you know, you can unscrew it and take the bases off. So I have, at the moment, there are three bass options. You have the smaller bass, which gives you more of a Robinson style sound. The larger bass adds some color to it. So I know some guys are, you know, using that for different uh, different excerpts or, or port ports of the show. And the third bass I have has the uh, kazoo resonators on the bottom. So it gives you that buzz bass. So you got a mix of like a buzz and the straight sound. It's not like a pure buzz sound. Um, I'm hoping to be adding in some, some more basses in the future with, uh, you know, brass, copper and aluminum and possibly wood i'm working that out uh still it's, it's been a while in progress mm -hmm. but uh once that's out it'll be interesting to see if it really brightens up the sound or not i i really enjoyed playing on the on this with the buzz uh feature on there hey john why don't you can you give us a couple notes uh with that just showing them with the buzz feature or or uh or you can actually compare them if you want to just okay i just took off the straight new thing and zoom 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 it's not. yeah it's sometimes it's a little difficult to hear the actual you know the nuances of it but i'm sure we'll... really buzzy kind of sound and uh, so, so, so what what kind here. of I'll, I'll just whoops I'll, I'll show the folks there it's got the membrane and the there you go so what what kind of a situation playing situation would you play that kind of a thing in John oh I, mostly like a combo setting where it just I want to get get something kind of different happening or, or sort of a almost humorous kind of a sound uh, Roy Eldridge used one once in a while. He he used, uh, but he used the you know I think the the Humes and Berg Buzz Wow once in a mm -hmm. while. Actually, mm -hmm. the guy uh, Jordan Sankey has Roy's old Buzz Wow mute. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> Do you so, want to give us a little quick little sample with just a uh, with one of the bases on there as well? I think it'll be too difficult to. Uh, really get the nuances between yeah. the bases on this little tiny microphone, but maybe point away just a little bit from the microphone and then that'll give us a little more clear uh, sound there. Thing. That's with the original regular bass. Mm -hmm. I like them because they're the bottom ends nice on them. They're clear, uh, just even sounding yeah it's a little just it's a subtle but interesting yeah, yeah. it's a little uh, a little more mellow it takes it a little bit of the edge off it doesn't it yeah well it's great to have those options um and what was the other one we were going to talk about i think it was the uh the the step uh, yeah the step -wa. yeah the step -wa. So this is interesting to me. Um, 
you know, we were talking earlier before we uh, started the the interview <clears throat> that it doesn't have it doesn't come with a stem, but it it does have a stem inside. So, Frank, can you talk about that? Yeah, so it comes with a it's a fixed stem on the inside. There's no you know little cup like you have in the Harmons. Uh, and this one was a little bit of a backstory. I had a, someone who had purchased a few mutes from uh, for, you know for me had emailed me asking about you know do you know what this mute is in this video. And it was a Sweet Edison video with with him playing, you know, and you just, I could make out the step out line and I emailed about 10 guys and they emailed about 10 other guys each. And, and I finally found one person that knew what it was. Um, so I started designing it based off of like, I think two photos and the one video. And about a month and a half into that design process, um, John managed to find uh, another John, John, uh, John Hallam out in, in, he's in the UK who had just found one after searching for 30 years. So the original mute was made by Lou Davis mutes, and it was the the Nat Ganella, uh, I think Nat Ganella Wah Wah mute or Wah mute Wah mute maybe John. Yeah, I think I think it was the Nat Ganella Wah Wah Wah. Yeah. So he had happened to find it and and surprised both of us, and he, he offered to send it out for me to really dial in the the final design of the uh, step wah. So were you pretty close when you were? It, facing it, was, it off of the uh, images. Yeah, it was it was surprisingly close. It was a, a few. I think five millimeters off in a few different directions, but it was way closer than I thought I was going to be. Um, but it was a lot of like guessing, like, hey, so, so Sweets is sitting there playing on, you know, from the 40s, so the bell's got to be a certain size and measuring that and then figuring out the uh, diameters and distances. And uh, it, was, it was it was interesting, and, and I got kind of lucky with the original design. But well, what I notice is this this mute is punchy you know paul yeah. and i were talking about that uh, we do some pretty big shows and sometimes they're out outside and sometimes there's no monitors sometimes you don't know what uh, if you're even coming through in the mix or whatever but even just from the standpoint of just being able to hear yourself once in a while i can see and i typically take my brightest if I need a Harman style mute, I'll take the brightest one I have just so that I can hopefully ensure that it's going to be out there and heard somewhat. But this is going to be one I think that I may use for occasions like this. Plus, it's just kind of cool. You know, I just I kind of like it. It's different. Another yeah, that, color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the punchiness comes from having that stem, the fixed stem going all the way to the brim. Because in a lot of Harmons, you know, they don't go all the way to the top of the mute. They go, you know, a little bit further down. So you get more mute body sound rather than direct... Uh, that buzz and, and uh, punchiness that you're hearing. So, John, can you things... give us an example of playing uh, a, a standard Harmon style and then and then the step wah? Sure. Yeah, I don't think the step wah was really trying to be a Harmon mute. I think it's really it's similar but different. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's an old harmon. And then. And then uh, to compare the harmon without the drum. Very it's kind of, very yeah, cool. It's or in between, it's almost like a bright cup mute sort of. A, a little bit. You you have the original one there with you, don't you, Frank? Yeah, I have it. Uh, let's let's take a pic. Let's can you can you hold the other one at yours up against uh, up against it just let me, to finish. Let me grab it from the desk quick. <laughs> yeah, so there's the uh, not not, not get his address in there, but there, there, there's the uh, two of them together. <laughs> yeah, that's hard to tell with the white, but yeah, that's cool. That thing's seen better days, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, the fact that you found one though is still, you know, still amazes us because it's, uh, I've never seen one, uh, you know, online. No, or I haven't anywhere. either. No, that's so. really, really cool. Well, you have a lot of cool things. Let's let's talk for a minute about. Um, you know, you you have a like a Ray Robinson cup uh, cup mute in here, which I love. I gave one to a student years ago, and he 
took off with it and I've been kind of always wanted to have one and so now I now I basically do have one but you in addition to that you have uh, the the line here as part of the line and this is kind of a prototype I'm I think I'm holding right now but an adjustable cup mute as well and you have one with a standard uh, type of uh, back on it or cup and we have you have a scalloped one and you have another more of a of a bowl featured one here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this and the design and what they what they do because it's pretty interesting and these sound great. Thanks. Yeah, so those were I'm still developing. I'm hoping in the next two weeks or so to be releasing them. Uh, the idea with that was originally just to have you know multiple cup options without having to bring multiple mutes. And the it looks like it's going to be coming with you know. Three Three cup options, the bowl shape, which is that quasi Shastock style cup, the felted one, which is a, a quasi Robinson style, and the scalped one is just more is for that brighter sound uh, for, you know, a big band setting or if you need to really cut through a section. So, yeah, yeah so I, I've been getting a lot of a lot of feedback. Originally, I was thinking of only offering one body. I sent you guys, I believe, two. Uh, and what I'm finding is that longer body, some guys are preferring over the shorter one because it's a little bit brighter. And again, it cuts more. So if you're in a pit situation, it'll have that slightly brighter sound to it. Oh, these um, bodies are different lengths. I, I yeah, they're different. I, I yeah, yes, yeah, different lengths and, and and different different tapers. So that shorter body actually gives more volume to the cup, so you get more of a cup sound oh, rather than okay. the, the straight sound. I'm so, also noticing that yeah. is in a different spot too. Yeah. So so it, it turns out I'm, I'm, I'll be offering both both cup bodies on that, uh, along with the three cups. And again, the idea is just to offer as many colors as possible without having to lug around a million different mutes. So you basically get six different mutes with that combination, plus they're all adjustable. So you can use it in your C trumpet or your D flat if you want or your B flat and still get the cup where it needs to be. Now, so and, and uh, this ring here, this is adjustable, right? Yeah, you can move that. That's uh, so if you have like two positions that you're playing on in a show, and you know like a really close position and a more open one, you can set it and mark it, and then you can adjust the cup back to it easily. Excellent idea. Great. I'm, uh, you know, I kind of I like this. There, you have so many here. I mean, you have this mellow wah also that's very cool. It's a little bit different. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about that right away while so you're here? So yes, the mellow was started out as me just wanting to have a complete Robinson set. I put I put some feelers on Trumpet Herald or something asking if anyone had a you know had a Robinson mellow at all, and someone had a how do, I think they had a Ingram restored one for them. So I got like this really nice new restored one and loved the sound when I got it in. Um, some of the intonation was very quirky, which apparently is a mellow thing. So that was just again trying to improve the intonation issues of the originals, um, and I believe. The Humes and Berg Melawas were the, they bought Robinson out at some point and it was the same, same mute. Um, but the intonation issues kind of continued with that, with mm -hmm. the, uh, the buyout. So that was, you know, tweaking the inside a little bit to get the intonation better. The sound is pretty much the same as the original Robinson I have though, which is pretty cool. Uh, well, I think that's one of the greatest things here. I mean, you have these traditional sounds that, that, that you can, that you've recreated but you've taken away all of the negative parts of the old mutes, you know? And the thing was, you know, they were made out of different materials back then, right? They had uh, fiberboard or whatever it was back in those days. And, you know, what's kind of interesting for me, and I don't know what you think about this, Paul, but I mean, there's kind of, you know, when I see something that's, th these are made on, a, these are 3D uh, printed, right? So, yeah. um, at times when I've seen other things or heard other things being played or maybe played a different one, it had this very, for lack of a better term, plasticky sound. And these don't seem to have that. These have more of this organic, natural sound like the real ones. But like I said, with the with the issues gone, they play all the way down to the bottom. They're nice and even. They're in tune. Your octaves sound great. Um, so I think that's cool. Do you have a, can you play a couple notes on one of those? Do you have one of those handy, John? Sure, the mellow wah, is that? Cool? Yes, the mellow wah. Yeah. Yeah, Oh, <laughs> 
Cool sound. I yeah. love it. It sounds great. You sound great, John. I always, I just can't tell you how much I love hearing you play the trumpet. Oh man. So you know, I know we're kind of, kind of want to keep this to a certain length here, guys. But um, why don't you just briefly here? Why don't you mention everything you got in the line so far, Frank? And I, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you probably will be continuing uh, to make improvements and add to it. So why don't you just bang it all out real quick, and we'll make sure we, uh, we, we write down uh, underneath the, this post of your your uh url and all that stuff so <laughs> sounds good i'll do my best to remember all of them i've got the uh the robinson cup the robinson straight and with a lot different bases the jazz bass on that the buzz bass uh solo tone mute which is based on the shastak the mega mute the step mute the mellow mute <laughs> the buzz pixie the pixie with the round bottom <laughs> and the ah come on john you gotta hurry up and the pixie with the flat bass too so that's that's the current lineup and we have uh hopefully in the next couple of weeks that adjustable cup that we were talking about earlier coming out and uh, a couple more things here and there on the way and i'm also working on a trombone lineup at the same time which is just going very slowly because of you know COVID and not being able to hand it off and hear guys play it so that's eventually that'll happen but and if people want to go to your website what's your website it's www.fhubermusic.com and the okay. facebook page is the same same name at the end of facebook.com so you know i've got an awesome. idea for another product uh frank it, it you know i'm just looking at all of this stuff and and how amazing it would have been to have it all with me you know in in sessions where they the the producer is going hmm we want a different sound i you know like could it be more mellow could it do this could it do that i think with this whole lineup um we could do all of that you know what whatever whim you know somebody has um you've got the sound for it um now you have to come up with a huber music tote bag or mute bag <laughs> to, to be able to pack all of these around uh, a mute <laughs> trunk yeah. there was a time many many years ago and bobby shu when, when i was a kid i was would be go up to his house and take lessons and stuff and he had this gigantic leather like it was like a you know the bags that the sailors use and the guys in the army use yeah. it was like a big giant one of those and one day i was i said what's that and he lifted this thing up and he poured out this mountain of mutes and he said this is what i take to my studio sessions because I never know what I'm going to need and who's going to be playing and what mutes are going to be playing. So, yeah, something organized like that. I mean, I that's that, that might be cool. Yeah. Anyways, well, thank you guys so much for for taking time out to share this. Uh, these are for everybody out there that might be watching. These really are truly unique and and quality products and i i don't just say that um lightly you know we don't just like have anybody on here with their stuff i mean i think paul you would agree with that right absolutely yeah i i, I just wanted to say one last thing i i can't thank you enough for the solo tone mute um i've been on so many shows or whatever where they ask for one and it's it it's I, I dread it every time just picking it up and <clears throat> i've actually practiced like you know a, a full half hour of routine stuff playing my clark studies on the mute because i enjoyed the intonation so well so thank you you're welcome I'm glad you like it so much well thanks so much for, again for being here guys and we'll look forward to seeing you again and uh, and maybe talking some more about some new mutes and we love having your input on our on our facebook uh, groups and and all this will also be available on our youtube channel so everybody check it out and uh be sure to go check out f huber music all right talk to you guys soon thanks